Now, you've probably already heard the news that we're not only going to get a whole new Star Wars trilogy, one separate from the Saga trilogies, that will be created by Ryan Johnson, who of course wrote and directed the soon-to-be-released Episode 8, but we're also getting a Star Wars TV series that will air on the new Disney streaming service starting in 2019. And my best guess says there's been pretty much three reactions to this huge news from Star Wars fans. One being a feeling that it's a great time to be alive and be a Star Wars fan because we have so much to look forward to now. While at the opposite end of the spectrum, there's no doubt those of you out there who feel Disney is now on the verge of destroying Star Wars by giving us way too much of it, and essentially attempting to milk it for all it's worth. While most of us, myself included, probably fall somewhere in between those two extremes. And though I put myself in the middle, I do lean heavily towards the side that is just happy to be alive in a time of so much Star Wars. But there is a part of me that fears what oversaturation can bring about. Because, at least in my opinion, Star Wars is something special. They're not just movies or shows. The release of a new movie feels like an event to me. And I wonder if it's still going to feel like that in 5 or 10 years when we keep getting new movies every year. And there are, for all we know, multiple live action and animated shows running. And again, maybe that's just a silly fear. Who knows? However, one thing this news today does tell me, and does make me very excited about, is that Disney and Lucasfilm likely think they have a masterpiece on their hands with The Last Jedi. Because before it's even released and judged by us fans, they've essentially given Ryan Johnson the keys to the Star Wars castle, if you will, by putting him in charge of a whole new trilogy. And when I say whole new, I really mean it, because even though we've been given virtually no details about this new trilogy, we have been told that it's going to be completely separate from the saga films, and be set apart from anything we've seen before, which leaves the door open for anything from an old Republic trilogy to something set in the sequel trilogy era that has nothing to do with the characters we've been getting to know, to maybe being set in a whole other part of the galaxy where they are just discovering the Force, or have learned to use it in new and different ways, who knows? Though if I had to make a guess, I'd say it'll be set in the time period of the Old Republic somewhere, because I do think this new trilogy is going to give us some interesting details about the history of the Star Wars galaxy, and it'll be a history that differs quite a bit from the one the Expanded Universe showed us. And again, considering Ryan Johnson wrote Episode 8, which is likely the movie in this new trilogy that's going to give us the most history about the Jedi of old and maybe the galaxy itself, it makes sense that the guy who started to create that new history would now be given the green light on the new trilogy to continue to expand upon it. Which means I really, really hope I love The Last Jedi, because Ryan Johnson, at least for the time being, is now the man in terms of the future of Star Wars. Now, as for the newly announced television series to air on the Disney streaming service, I'd be stunned if it wasn't set in some already well-established time period and feature maybe some familiar characters. Now, why do I say that? Because a Star Wars movie is going to lure huge crowds to the theater, no matter what, even if it's something new and completely different. People go to see Star Wars movies because, well, it's a Star Wars movie, and it's always a fun, action-packed spectacle. However, a Star Wars show, which will have a fraction of the budget of even just one movie, that must spread that budget out over multiple episodes, is not going to be the same type of action-packed spectacle. It'll be the story that attracts and hooks people, and in order to get them on board in the first place, especially considering this will be on a pay service, though Disney has promised it'll be cheaper than even Netflix, it's going to take something familiar to get people on board, in my opinion. And let's be honest here, Disney is going to hope this new Star Wars series is what sells this new service in the first place, and the best way to do that is to promise people good old familiar Star Wars, not try to sell something new to them. And that's not to say there won't be other shows down the road that don't branch out and offer different or even new errors or aspects of Star Wars, but I'd be surprised if they take huge risks with this first show that, again, will have to sell the service. And if I had to make a guess again here, I'd say this show will be set post Episode 9 and will have at least some appearances by characters that survive the current trilogy. Why? Because that'll be the Star Wars freshest in everyone's mind, and promising to continue the story of Episode 9 sounds like a good way to sell this new series. Well, that's all I've got for you this time, but I'm really excited to hear what you all think about today's huge news. Are you excited by it, or scared for the future of Star Wars? What do you think this new trilogy and show will be about? What would you like them to be about? So tell me in the comments below and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thank you for watching.